Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. Chopper Fett here. You can call me Brett. Just found a uh, school parking lot. Did a little slow speed maneuvers on the old V-Rod. And needless to say, the V-Rod hates a slow maneuvers. So we ain't gonna go fast now through the school zone. Okay, Mary, through the school zone. But we're gonna go further and faster than 10 miles per hour. Whew. We got that wind today. We had our back for the first part. And then blow us side to side for the second. All right. This is the way. All right, everybody. So today's subject of choice is going to be how long do you own your typical motorcycle for? Another reason I want to bring this subject up today is because in my garage, not to brag, but we do have four motorcycles. Now, those four motorcycles cost less than one brand new soft tail. Well, an upper end soft tail, but still, four motorcycles for the price of one. I'm not a rich man, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Moving on from that though, I have not sold any of the motorcycles that I have obtained yet to this point in time. And it made me kind of start thinking is, how long do people normally keep their motorcycles? So our oldest motorcycles that we have in the garage, as far as oldest that we've owned them, is my Dyna and my wife's Sportster. I find it hard to think that one day I could say, yep, it's time to sell the Dyna. But lately, I've been thinking, maybe it is time. But maybe it's not. <laughs> Why don't you make up your mind? Let me get into uh, my thoughts on the Dyna and where it's at, because I know you guys haven't seen it in a, a good stint of time. I said a few videos back that Dad and I went on a little bit of a trip, about 160 miles, to some roads I've never been on before. Really good, enjoyable time. And after that ride, I noticed my rear brake caliper was not sitting very secure on on the bracket that it was supposed to go on to. So me being the homer that I am, I looked at it a little bit and you know I looked at the bolts and everything and I was like, well, simple thing is let's see how tight these bolts are that are holding it in place. And oh look at that, I was able to turn it some and turn it some. And it still turned, but Harley bolts aren't grade eight bolts. <laughs> I snapped that SOB in half and I got half of it out, but the other half is still stuck in the threads. So that's on me, kind of. If Harley would have reinstalled the brake caliper correctly after changing my brake pads, I wouldn't have fiddled with it and this wouldn't have been a thing. But, potato, potato. So I went ahead and I ordered the replacement part off of Sir Dyke. And I also ordered the replacement pin that I snapped off essentially. Found a local guy who was willing to take the rear wheel off with the new caliper bracket on for half an hour's labor. And I want to take it to Harley once I get the parts. Now the reason I'm accentuating once I get the parts is because I don't have them yet. I still don't have them. I placed the order about a month ago. Where are they? Killing is making a choice. Where are they? Every time the ship date from Harley, not necessarily Sir Dyke, but from Harley, would come, it'd be delayed by two more weeks. So I took the part number and I threw it on flea bay just to see maybe there's one out there and sure enough there was one out there powder coated black and everything so it was the same price as a new one which that part kind of hurt but i was like i they got it in stock they could literally start shipping it to me so i canceled my bracket order with sir Dyke, and then i ordered the one off of flea bay I got the pin in, I'm still waiting on the bracket, it has shipped, 
but the Dyna should be back up and running hopefully by the end of the month. I know people hate it when I say what time of year it is. It is mid-October right now. So I'm not sure if you'll see too much more in the way of moto vlogs on it for this year. I might sneak out, you know, December or January or something like that if if I can get a nice enough day, but oh, I miss that bike. I miss riding it. <laughs> so back to kind of our subject at hand, now that I've provided you an update as far as where the, uh, the OG bike is for this channel. It's got me kind of thinking, maybe it's time to move on from some of the bikes and get something bigger and better. Now, as you guys have known, I have had issues with this bike. Some of them have been real issues. Some of them have been completely insane Brett not being able to ride the motorcycle. I will say like this today is great because I am being pushed in the way that I was having issues before. So it's actually working out to, in my benefit to, to ride here today. So yay, wind, I love it, great. But you know, I also had uh, the issue with the random dying on this bike, which solved and fixed. And you know, I've been able to remedy all the problems I've had with it, but I was maybe thinking, is this the bike I wanna keep? Or should I sell it? I know dad would be willing to buy it back in a heartbeat. So I know that option exists. But I've only had the bike Geez, where are we going on? Seven, eight months now? I feel like I haven't given it enough time to fully fall in love with it. Now, I do love it. This is one of the bikes that, you know, just twisted the throttle like so. It's just so intoxicating. And I find myself thinking I can get rid of it. But man, it would be hard to justify getting rid of it. So, okay, so these are, you know, the oldest bike and one of the newest bikes. Okay, so which one do you get rid of? I don't know. And if you get rid of it, what are you replacing it with? Well, I think you all know, Brett's been eyeing the old Z900 RS from Kawasaki. I did the biggest mistake, which is I went and sat on one. Get on your side of the road. And it felt so comfortable. I, I'm telling you guys, I, I felt so at home on that motorcycle. I love Harley Davidson, don't get me wrong, I love them to death, but ever since I bought the Triumph, and now since I sat on that Kawasaki, given what my lifestyle is right now, where it's not putting hundreds of miles on my bike on a given ride, my day is a 40 to 50 mile ride. I can deal with the small bikes. I can deal with not being able to have a large capacity and carry things. Sure, I got one question for you. It's, can you deal with that? That's just the point of my life I'm at right now. And that's why I feel like if I was to sell either the Dyna or this, plus what I have saved up, I could go buy a new Z900 RS and I even have to finance it given the price of used bikes lately. Ah, the, the, the temptation is real for sure. It really is. But at the same time, I'm the same guy who will put his heart too much into it instead of his brain. And it's probably a good thing I haven't rode the Z900 RS or otherwise I would have a really conflicting situation at this point in time. Right now, I don't know if it's actually a good bike or not. Everyone says it's a great bike, but I have no idea um, for me personally. But what I imagine it being is taking my Triumph and putting 100 horsepower in it, better handling, sits up a little bit higher and a little bit more comfortable. That's what I imagine it being. I don't know if that's actually what it is or not. But for you guys out there who do get new bikes fairly often, how often are you keeping your average motorcycle? Because again, right now my average, well, I can't really say average because I have the Dyna for going on five years now and the other bikes are all within the last year so I can't really justify them so we'll just say my average ownership time is five years how many people are keeping your bikes that long 
I don't know. Go ahead and uh, drop your comments down below. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you've uh, got a Z900 RS, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that. And as always, though, I will catch you guys on the next door side as this is the way. Sharp fits, see you in the next one. Later!